horned monster. He was with Melchior. There was something different about him. He wasn't a Moloch, though, right? <sighs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he's a demon. But why would the Abbey be working with a demon? He could be a Therian, maybe. I mean, there was Medissa and Kamoana. No, I don't think so. The Abbey keeps their Therians behind barriers and bound to Earth Pulse points. A Therian can't send malevolence to Inominat while walking freely. That's correct. And besides, Orthrus was already here. In any case, now we know Melchior has a mean-looking bodyguard in addition to his illusions. It'll take quite a lot to stop him. Aye. That's a fact. Eleanor, there's something I have to ask. What is it? Did you leak our plans to the Abbey? <laughs> Eleanor hasn't done anything like that. Then how do you explain Melchior and his illusions already waiting for us when we got to a ball? I promised you that I would work together with you until I found the truth for myself. I'm not up to any tricks. It's far too late for that now. Exactly what a guilty party would say. If anyone's suspicious here, I'd say it's you, Magilu. No tricks? <laughs> I don't even know what a trick is. <sighs> Enough. If Eleanor was leaking information, then Titania would surely be under attack by now. Right. I'm sure the Abbey would love to have those Therians back. But the enemy was in that village waiting in ambush. The Abbey isn't foolish. They figured out by now that we're rounding up the Therians. They'll have left traps for us with each remaining one. It's the obvious move. All right. If that's how you see it, I'll stand down. So you trust me then? No. I'm saying that anything the Abbey tries, I'll be ready for it. <sighs> oh, such a brave, determined soul. Listen, Eleanor really isn't spying on us. I was with her almost every minute, and when I wasn't, Velvet was watching her. And she's a woman who keeps her promises. She wouldn't lie to... Lafayette. We understand, Lafayette. It's Eleanor. If she were lying to herself to somehow keep spying on us, the guilt would fill her with malevolence. I see. You're right. The fact that I haven't turned into a dragon proves that. Thank you. Both of you. I didn't think you were giving them information intentionally. But there are illusionists like Melchior out there. That means we can't rule out someone recording your thoughts in secret. I don't think we need to worry about that either. Not with you and Lafayette always near. <sighs> now that that's settled, it's time for you all to testify to my innocence. That could be difficult. What? Well, okay. Why don't you start off by telling us all about the time you sold us out to Teresa back in Helleviz? Oh! Why bring up that old yam? You're a very vindictive man, do you know that? You're just figuring that out? <laughs> well, there's your proof, at least. You wouldn't make much of a spy. <laughs> she really wouldn't. Hey, that's not what I meant! You were mean! <laughs> Eleanor, does the Abbey possess an art that can control demons? Not that I've ever heard of. Besides, if they could control demons, there'd be no need to resurrect Inominat, would there? Can't argue with that. But Melchior was obviously in control of that demon. How did he manage that? You can't tether them like a Moloch, and Melchior wasn't using oaths or mana to compel him. No, this was something more like mind control. Mind control? Let's say you know your target's innermost desires, you simply conjure the right illusion. Show them what would push their buttons in just the right way. Ah, if you can create an illusion of something someone really wants, you can control them. Exactly. You can force a powerful burden upon your target's psyche. Until their spirit breaks, that is. What happens when they break? Depends on the target. They might become an empty shell, they might go wild with desire, Eeny teeny spiny crow. You sure know a lot about this. Now that you put it that way, why would I know so much about it? 
What if someone is controlling me, making me say these very words? How horrifying! I believe I'll take your words with a grain of salt. Hmm. There's one of them off-limit Class 4 islands that folks call Serpent Isle. Place has been overrun with snakes since forever. I hate the things, so it sounds like hell to me. But I've heard there's a woman who actually lives there. Whatever for? Why would anyone want to live in a place like that? I know. It's mighty strange. Place supposedly is crawling with demons, too. Last time I was in the area, I checked it out. Kept my distance, of course. Used me spyglass. And? Was she there? Aye, she was. Except she looked like a snake herself. I mean, she was human up top, but her face was a weird color, and her lower half was all slithery and wiggly. Ugh. Creep me out. A snake woman, huh? Even worse, looked like you couldn't swing a cat without hitting a snake. <sighs> Just the thought of it keeps me awake at night. You should have a stiff drink and get some sleep before you pass out on deck. I'll tell Benwick to give you an extra ration. Wow. Uh, thanks a lot, first mate. I appreciate it. <laughs> I ought to pester him for some of that aged reserve he keeps hidden away. Welcome back. Did you find the Therian? Yeah. We're bringing these two back to Titania. Dogs? Look, lizards, no problem. Walking hunks of armor I can deal with, but dogs? On my ship? You're not a dog person. I was, uh, bit by one when I was a kid. Then you've got nothing to worry about. If they're biting anyone on this ship, it'll be me. Uh, are you okay, Velvet? Oh, sure. They're just dogs. No, I mean, in general. <sighs> Fine, they can come aboard. I'll take us back to Titania. We have to take good care of Orthy and Russ. That's on you. They won't let me near. Ah. Uh, yeah, well, what do you expect? You only killed their master. Don't worry. I'll take responsibility. You mustn't! They're quite vicious, you know! I just asked them if they wanted to be friends, and they suddenly bit me! I'm sure you said something to irritate them, like, I'll make you my minions! You had it coming. She... she knows! But you have Therians to find, Lafayette. You won't be able to look after them all the time. I suppose... What should I do? You could ask Kamoana and Medissa. Kamoana said she once had a dog. Even if they get a little rowdy, Medissa will be around to keep them safe. That's a good idea. I'll go ask them. Thanks. We can't be killing off Therians. Besides, they remind me of Nico. Velvet. You want a pet dog, Luffy said? You should go to the Abbey, then! Why the Abbey? Because the place is full of the Shepherd's lap dogs. <laughs> get it? Lap dogs! Yeah, I get it. I devoured them again. No, don't. So, you said your little brother made this copy. He could read the ancient tongue. That's amazing. Luffy was different from most other kids. He read books a lot because his body was so weak. He studied all the time, so that he could be ready to travel the world one day. Which was kind of funny, considering he'd hide in my bed whenever he had a nightmare. Really?
But I don't care that he got scared. I just wanted him to live. That's why I have to... Solve it! I'll devour as much as it takes. I will have vengeance. Solve it! Done. The art is attuned to you. Thank you. This time I'll make sure to finish what I set out to do. I've got to say, I didn't think you had it in you, Oscar. I don't believe I asked for your opinion. Lord Artorius! Go back outside, Teresa. We'll see you when we're done. Are the rumors true? Are you using that experimental art on Oscar? It is true. Oh, I was under the impression it was still incomplete, sir. Yep. There's still a potentially fatal weakness for its channeler. We've taken the theory as far as it will go. The next step is to learn its control and actual practice. Don't tell me you intend to test it against that Therian! Please, let me do it. I should be the one, not him! You are not strong enough. Th then at least let me back him up! So you can take the enemy out before Oscar uses the art? A noble plan, but I'm afraid it'd mess everything up. So! It was my idea to volunteer, sister. I failed at Titania, and allowed the Therian to be stolen from Palamedes. I need to atone for my mistakes. Then let me come with you. I have different orders for you. Teresa Linares, you are hereby relieved of your duties as an exorcist, and are to return your monarch. Relieved of duty? Why? For our plans to be realized, we require an especially strong Malak. We've analyzed your Malak's dormant abilities, and he is of considerable power, on the same level as the young Malak who betrayed us for the enemy. Simply put, you just don't got what it takes to handle him, sweetheart. When this is all over, I'd love to have some of your homemade cooking again, sister. I could go for that quiche you used to make. How can you talk of that right now? Lord Artorius. I know what you're going to ask. Yes, Oscar, when you fulfill your mission, I will make Teresa an exorcist again. Oscar. Are you doing this for... Don't worry about me. I'd go to the ends of the earth and back for a plate of your delicious quiche. Huh? What's this? 
I'm receptive to that art and to you. Take it easy, Velvet. You've been out for three days. Then that's three days wasted. What's the situation? Well, let's see. For one thing, Grimoire's been deciphering that ancient book. She says that this new copy is complete. All the pages we were missing are there. As for the dogs, Kamawana's taken a real shine to them. Alright then. Now we just need to find that last Therian. Velvet, no! I said take it easy. Seriously. Oh, hold on. Have you not had anything to eat? Um, well, I just thought, since you hadn't either... Are you serious? Why would you do a full thing like that? You'll die if you don't eat. Actually, I... He won't die if he doesn't eat. Malakim don't actually depend on food for sustenance. If they do eat, it's only as a quirky hobby. Alright, if you're sure. If you feel like going hungry, it's your life. But there's no sense in doing it on my account. Huh. <sighs> Good to see you're feeling better again. As you probably noticed, we made it back to Titania already. Sorry to keep you all waiting on me. Get everyone together. We meet now. <sighs> well, that could have gone better. I just... Wanted to better understand the hardships Velvet's suffering through. It seems unfair for her to bear all of it alone. Hmm. Well, she's... How can I put it? A very straightforward kind of person. But nothing gets under her skin like a clumsy display of sympathy. What should I do about her then? For now, just get something in your tummy. Any good warrior knows you eat when you have the chance. Even Malakim have more strength on a full stomach than an empty one, don't they? Yeah. It's true. Food will fill an empty stomach. But what is there to fill an empty heart, I wonder? Time for some grub, Lafayette. What are you hungry for? Hmm. I'll have some stuffed giant squid. Or prison crab dumplings. Or sea snake bowl! It's your first meal in three days, right? Better stick with something mild or you'll be sorry. How about a risotto or a vegetable rice soup? That could be nice. I could go for some borscht or shark fin and egg soup. For dessert, I'll have a sweet bean and jelly fruit cup, a giant parfait, and a triple berry cake. Zip it, Mogilu. Oh well, I'm getting full just thinking about it. I think I'd like some rice porridge. With a pickled plum and baby sardines on top. Ooh, an austere choice. And an apple. In that case, you should have some apple boo. Apple boo? What on earth is that? It's just grated apples. But when my brother wasn't feeling well, I often fed it to him. I think I'd like to try some. If you insist, I'll make some for you. At least it's something I can make without needing to taste it. Okay. I insist. Okay. If you're already making some, I'd like... Zip it, Mogilu! Okay, Fee. I need you to find us our next Earth Pulse Point. I found one, but it's really, really far, way up in the northeast. Hmm. If it's that far out, it has to be in Engand. Engand is a collection of small islands. There's a comparatively bigger one called Lionel Island, but that's the exception. Yeah, I think the Earth Pulse Point's probably out there. Engand, huh? Those waters are haunted by ghost ships, you know. Ghost ships? Yep. Legend has it they snatch up wrongdoers who bear lingering regrets and whisk them away to that eternal voyage. That doesn't sound promising. Currents from all over the world converge in Engen's waters. 
So a lot of shipwrecks from distant seas end up there as their final resting place. Uh-huh. Ah. So that's where the stories of ghost ships come from. Boo. You guys have no imagination. I'd rather they stay imaginary myself. We should still be careful. We'll be fine. Ghost ship, exorcist, whatever comes along. We'll be the ones to administer their last rites. The second he has a spare moment, he buries himself in his books. Knowledge opens up bigger worlds. I imagine that back when Teresa was bossing him around, reading was a fun escape, an adventure in and of itself. Hmm? What's up, you guys? You're reading a pretty hard book there, aren't you? This? It's about dinosaurs. It says that long before humans were around, these huge creatures ruled the world. There are so many different kinds, like Tyrannosaurs, and Triceratops and Brachiosaurs. They're all so cool. They look like dragons to me. They look similar, but dinosaurs couldn't live inside volcanoes, and they didn't do well in the cold either. But they were crazy huge and strong. Nothing else could even compete with them. I bet they would have made for great sparring partners. I think this Gigantospinosaurus might be my favorite. Those two huge points jutting out from both sides of its body make it look just like you and your two swords. Actually, it's also known as the dual-bladed dragon. Wow, it really does sound like a perfect match for me then. Okay, so if they weren't dragons, what were they? They look a lot like lizards. Maybe they're like my ancestors or something. But you used to be a human. <laughs> Damn. I think I might have gotten a bit too used to this new body of mine. I wonder if their tails can fall off too. Hmm. Did you ever figure out if that bug was a stag or a rhinoceros beetle? Actually, I still haven't really looked into it. Why not? Weren't Rokuro and Aizen pretty curious to find out too? They're why I haven't. They both have really strong opinions, and they both make a believable argument. And if I determined it was a new kind of beetle entirely, my decision would change the very course of their fates. Their fates? I think you're exaggerating things. Hey, what are you guys talking about? We're still hashing out what that Rhino Stagros really is. Kiddo here is holding off on his final decision because he's worried about how you'll take it. You're both adults. Can't one of you just give in so we can move on? It's a rhinoceros beetle. I'm not backing down on that. No, it's a stag beetle. Why not just take off the pointy bits? Then we can all agree it's just a plain old beetle. Simple. Sounds good to me. Don't even joke about that. If you took away my swords, I wouldn't have anything left. Same thing goes for a stag beetle and its pincers. And taking away a rhinoceros beetle's horns is disrespectful to its way of life, and to even suggest it is just plain wrong. No, if we're going to argue it out over this, we need to exhaust every possible angle before coming to a conclusion. It's the right thing to do. Madam Eleanor! Here's that field guide to rare insects of Midgan you wanted me to get you! Thanks, Bianfu. Surely this book will have something about that bug. <gasps> Yeah, here it is. This beetle's real name is... Argonathocrasis, the thick jaw beetle. It's named for its jaws? That must make it a stag... It's a drone beetle. The field guide says it's a really rare variety, too. I guess that's that. No, you're wrong. It's a brand new species. I call it the Lafayette Rhino Stagros. That's my decision and I'm not backing down. Oh, come on. It's fine. No, it's not. You have to do it right. You're so mean, Medissa. If you keep telling me what to do, I'll hate you. Fine. Hate me then. So long as you do what I say. Fine! Uh, I love you, Medissa, and you don't even care! Uh, what's going on here? Eleanor, 
Medusa's being mean. She keeps telling me to dry my hair after my bath, but I don't wanna. What? Is that all you're arguing about? This is important. Just because she's a Therian doesn't mean she can't catch a cold. But I won't! I won't catch a cold! I swear! I don't want to take Mom's yucky, awful medicine, so I'm not gonna get sick. If you insist on being so stubborn, we can do this the hard way. There's no need for everyone to get so worked up. Her hair's pretty much dry already, right? Yeah, what she said! <sighs> I'm spoiling her, aren't I? Seriously. Look, we don't even know what would happen if Etherian catches a cold, let alone how to treat it. That's true. <sighs> but look, I get it. I know you feel responsible for her. You mean, what happened to her mother? Yeah. Lafayette told me about it. My my, look who's a little tattletale. I'm sorry. But I thought Medissa should know. Just in case. It's fine, I suppose. I should have told her myself. Well, at least I understand everything now. It's all too tragic for words. Yes. And the knowledge would not be something that a young child could possibly bear. I'm not planning on telling her. That's probably your only option. But do you really think you can keep lying to her forever? I have to. For her own sake. For her, huh? All right. I'll go with you on this. You two are going through an awful lot of trouble for a selfish kid. All kids are selfish. They're selfish. But that's what their families and their mothers should be there for. Don't you have any memories like that yourself? Sorry, but I'd rather just keep them to myself. Pish and Piffle. Everybody in their issues, am I right? I cannot work like this. Is something wrong, Kuragane? Well, how do I put it? Hey! Uh, have you guys seen Kamawata around? Not lately, no. I haven't seen her, no. Great. She's making me play hide-and-seek with her, but she's surprisingly good at it for her age. Where is that girl hiding? Come out, come out, wherever you are! <laughs> it worked! Whoa! You were inside, Korogane? Have you been in there this whole time? Yep, I even asked him if I could first. I only let her because she threatened to cry if I didn't. But you still covered for her? That was nice of you. Yeah, thanks, Korogane. You're pretty nice. I told no lie. I don't have a face, so I couldn't have seen her. I suppose that's technically true. Hilafi set, you won't believe it! Kuro Gane's armor is actually really roomy inside. I think I might even make it my secret hideout. I'm not sure Koragane would like that. Oh, please, no. One Therian to go. When I escaped, Ceres told me that Artorias could still be killed. That means she must have known everything. That Inominat is incomplete. How Therians work. But why did she betray Artorias? Why did she give me her strength? I know that try as you might, some fires can never fully be extinguished. But what made you go so far as to feed yourself to me? Tell me, why did you do it, sis? Oh, what am I saying? Ceres was a Moloch. Just a Moloch. Just focus on what has to be done. Once the Therians are all together, I can end this. That's all that matters. That's all I need to think about.
We're coming up on Lionel Island. So much for the ghost ships. Should we expect another welcome party waiting for us again? No. I had the Bloodwings spread a rumor that we were raiding an Abbey compound far, far from here. As far as plans go, that's better than nothing. <laughs> All this cloak and dagger. Give me a good old frontal assault any day. First mate, sir. There's a ship drifting ahead of us. A ghost ship? It's an Abbey ship. Their flag. It's a distress signal. Understood. Commence approach. Are you actually going to help an enemy ship? A ship signaling distress has neither allies nor enemies. That's a code all seafarers abide by. It's an obvious trap. Not even pirates would use a distress signal for a surprise attack. Of course, after we rescue a ship, we still strip them of everything they've got. Anyway, if it's a trap, we'll kill everyone on board. Simple. <sighs> a waste of time if you ask me. Benwick, do we still have any Salatoma left? Yes, sir. If this is their full crew, we should have enough on board to treat them. Now that you mention it, don't Abbey ships usually have a bigger crew? These were all who were aboard when I hijacked the ship and made them set sail. Teresa! I knew I was being reckless. But I never expected we'd run afoul of the Corsair's Scourge. But you know, I'm glad we did. Since it brought me to you. You seriously plan to fight in that condition? No, no. I know you've won this one. Use me as you will. Use you? Don't bother asking. It's a trap. Lionel Island is where you'll find Dees. Hatharian. My brother Oscar is guarding over it. We can handle him just fine. You should know that Oscar's acquired a powerful new art. Its formula developed by Lord Melchior. The art heightens a Moloch's power far beyond its normal limits. The effect is incredible. Normal arts don't even compare. Even were you to win, you wouldn't come away unscathed. Why are you telling us this? The art is still untested and imperfect. There's no guarantee its caster will survive the effects. I don't want anything to happen to Oscar. If I'm your hostage, Oscar won't move against you. This will afford you a window to snatch the Therian and make your escape. You're willing to betray the Abbey? There's nothing in this world that could ever replace Oscar. Mm. I know you can't trust me. So don't give me your medicine. I'll place my life in your hands. Just save Oscar. Lady Teresa! If true, this information will be of use to us. For now, let's bring her aboard and give her the medicine. 